and Tesla was the first person to really show how to transmit wireless energy through the air to ignite electrical bulbs or electrical tubes. They were fluorescent tubes, which he had in the room. These tubes would respond to different frequencies. So if he produced one frequency, one group of bulbs would light, and if he produced another frequency, another group of bulbs was, would light. In 1898, while perfecting his patents for the invention of wireless radio transmission, Tesla's laboratory mysteriously burns to the ground. This fire destroys thousands of hours of work, setting the inventor back years and costing him personally over a million dollars. Tesla is horrified by the extent of the damage, but his is a resilient spirit. For while the hardware lay in cinders, Tesla's remarkable mental abilities enabled him to begin the process of recreating his work. In 1899, Tesla moves to Colorado Springs to experiment with terrestrial and atmospheric waves. Out on the prairie, he pursues his passion for discovering sources of free energy, both above and below the surface of the Earth. While investigating a phenomenon known as the Schumann cavity, he develops his theories for tapping limitless sources of power that all people of the world may share. Surrounding the Earth, there's a cavity that resonates at about eight cycles per second. And this cavity exists between the Earth we're standing on now and the bottom of the ionosphere, about a 60 kilometer gap. And this three dimensional resonant cavity in that cavity you can transmit power, electromagnetic energy, at 8 hertz with almost no attenuation. The Schumann cavity is pumped or fueled at this time with megawatts of power from the lightning strokes that are occurring many times a second on a worldwide basis. It's rather like a child who's playing with a tetherball. Tesla was so creative, he envisioned uh, using his uh, power transmitter to spank the ball, put a great big ball of electricity, if, by analogy, a pulse of electricity in the ionosphere and it would uh, very weakly distribute itself all the way around the world and when it came around the other side, just at the right moment, he would spank it again with another pulse of electricity and he'd keep doing this until the accumulated energy was so great that it would be uh, uh, a resource to be pulled back out of the sky uh, by a proper antenna. Tesla's idea was to be able to provide power equally to all people on Earth. At this time, there are two to three billion people on this planet that can't go home at night and turn on the lights. We can. The people that can are living in poverty. Tesla saw that there was a division between the have and the have-nots, and he was determined to make electrical power equally available to all people on this planet as a gift. Tesla develops the technology at Colorado Springs to produce astonishingly high voltages and currents. When the switch is thrown, ghostly sparks dance inside the lab, while on the copper ball atop the antenna, thick blue lightning crackles up over 100 feet into the sky. Thunderclaps are heard over 15 miles away. It is one of the great inventor's crowning achievements, man-made lightning. At Colorado Springs, he had a 56 uh, kilovolt ampere Westinghouse transformer that George Westinghouse gave to him, and it had various taps on it up to 55,000 volts. And uh, through the amplification of this transformer into his um, magnifying transmitter, he's able to actually blowing up the Colorado Springs, uh, some of the generators in the power, uh, Colorado Springs uh, plant at a distance of about 25 miles away. Originally it was thought that he generated or used so much power from the uh, utility company that uh, burned out a couple of their generators. Since then there's been some conjecture that actually he was picking up more energy from the surrounding air at that high altitude and it was feeding back into the generator and you cannot feed electrical energy back into a generator and that's what blew them out <laughs> and they wouldn't sell him any more power until he and his assistant went down and repaired the generators <laughs> Tesla determines that waves of energy in the earth can be used to transmit power to any point on the globe 
In laboratory tests, he successfully demonstrates the illumination of wireless lamps many miles from the laboratory. But his experiments also produce more ominous possibilities. Alpha waves in the human brain are between 6 and 8 hertz. The wave frequency of the Schumann cavity resonates between 6 and 8 hertz. All biological systems operate in the same frequency range. The human brain's alpha waves function in this range, and the electrical resonance of the Earth is between 6 and 8 hertz. Thus, our entire biological system, the brain and the Earth itself, work on the same frequencies. If we can control that resonance system electronically, we could directly control the entire mental system of humankind. Tesla, aware of the awesome power this aspect of his discovery might unleash, decides to keep it under wraps. With the success of the Colorado experiments, Tesla moves back to New York City. After courting several financial backers, he is introduced to J.P. Morgan, the infamous banker and international financier. Morgan is convinced by Tesla's promise that he can, quote, build a world broadcasting system that will earn millions. Inspired by the earlier works of genius attributed to Tesla, the business savvy Morgan invests $150,000. Though he must concede 51% ownership in his radio patents to the fabulously wealthy industrialist, Tesla nevertheless proceeds with his construction of the legendary Wardenclyffe Tower in 1900. Wardenclyffe Laboratories were built by Tesla to try to prove his dream, his radio transmission of power. First it started off, he told his back as it would be just a voice communication, but his real dream was power. Soon thereafter, with Wardenclyffe in the midst of construction, Tesla receives a report that Guillermo Marconi has successfully completed a trans-ocean radio transmission. Morgan threatens to pull out. Rather than admit defeat, Tesla expands on his original idea for Wardenclyffe, transforming it into the pilot project for his long-envisioned global power and communications system. Tesla promises Morgan that he can erect a system of towers that will pull down energy from the ionosphere, making it possible to transmit electricity throughout the world without wires. In short, free energy for everyone. Tesla was called a nut because Tesla also said that he could generate without any fuel, without any solar energy, without any wind power, he could generate electrical power, and he did do that. And, he, and that was something that the fuel companies didn't want to have happen. He was also able to broadcast electrical power through the air without any wires. And that project was stopped by J.P. Morgan when, he, when the commercial consequences became obvious. Seeing no way to make a profit from Tesla's free energy device and convinced Marconi would monopolize radio, Morgan backs off. Ironically, over 40 years later, the Supreme Court of the United States determines that Marconi copied his radio technology from patents already held by Tesla and that it was Tesla who actually discovered wireless transmission. Some believe that the Wardenclyffe fiasco was about more than just money. They say Tesla himself scuttled the plant out of fear that in the wrong hands, the potential power generated by Wardenclyffe could bring lasting harm to the people and the planet. Although Morgan didn't finance the Wardenclyffe Tower at the end, it seems to me the project was not stopped because of money. Tesla stopped it when he realized his ideas might be co-opted and implemented solely for military purposes. That's probably the wisest decision a scientist can make. And Tesla reveals for the first time in an article published in the, in the New York Times that Wardenclyffe could also be used as a weapon to take down airplanes. He managed to stop the catastrophe that would be attributed to him because being able to free and target down two billion volts from the ionosphere is sufficient to burn any city on the planet. The effect is stronger than the atomic bomb. 